Mountain Maker. Today I'm going to be making a stereo to dual mono cable. I'm going to be using a soldering iron, solder, and a Swiss Army knife. At the top of the shot here, you can also see a wet piece of paper towel. This is to wipe the solder from the soldering iron. Here's a cable that I already have. It's a stereo cable, and you can see it has three wires within the black sleeve. If we undo the plug on the other end, we can see these three wires again. Red, blue, and the sleeve is the copper wire. So onto this cable, I want to connect a mono jack, two mono jacks. I'm gonna use this old RCA cable that I had lying around, and I've put these adapters on the end. These will turn RCA into quarter inch jack. The blue wire goes to the white tip, the red wire goes to the red tip, and the copper goes to both of the sleeves here. So I'm going to cut this wire so that I can start to take the black sleeve off and expose the copper strands inside so that I can get them ready to connect to the stereo cable that you saw before. After separating the two wires from each other, Here's how to strip a wire using a Swiss Army knife. Gently apply pressure to the black sleeve of the wire while spinning it slowly between your fingertips. So here I've removed the sleeve and you can see inside there are many copper strands here surrounding the red wire in the center. I'm going to remove more of the sleeve so that I can have more of that copper exposed. So I've got more to solder to. And I'll twist those together to keep them all neatly in a group. And to repeat on side two. Now all that's left to do is to connect both of the copper wires together because there is shared earth that goes to the two sleeves. So I bring them together and twist them a few times to bind those up into one single thread. Next, I'll remove the sleeve from the red and the white wire. And that is the new mono end of the lead complete. And you can see that the leads are almost identical. The red will connect to the red, the white will connect to the blue, and then all of the exposed copper strands will also connect together. I'm removing more of the black sleeve on the stereo wire just so I can expose more of those individual copper strands. And by gently prising the wire apart where I've already made an incision, I can just run the knife back and forth to finish cutting through the sleeve. This one's being extra stubborn, so I'm just going to use the knife to cut through the sleeve here to remove it from being wrapped around these three inner wires. I'm cutting the red wire so that I stagger where the connections happen. If I left all of them the same length, then there's a chance that the conductive parts, the exposed bits, are going to touch when I bind all this up in electrical tape at the end. So by staggering these connections, I know that nothing is going to connect that shouldn't connect, so I'm going to have a clean audio signal. I'll remove the sleeve from the end of the freshly cut blue wire, and then in a moment from the end of the red wire you can see 
in the top right of the video. The soldering iron is hot at this point, so I'm wiping it on the paper towel just to remove any old solder from the end. And now I'm just going to tin it with some fresh solder. The next step is to apply solder to all of the exposed parts of these wires. Almost as though I was using glue to stick two surfaces together whereby you need to apply the glue to both surfaces before bringing them together. To get to the copper wires here, I'm just going to pin it in place using my arm because there's a kink in the wire that means it's always going to try and bend away from me. And to finish, just wipe any residual solder from your soldering iron tip. Now all the wires are tinned. The next step is to get my magic hand. Here it is with all of the wires in place. With the red wire connected, the white and the blue are now in the perfect place too. And I'm ready to go ahead and solder that connection. And here you can see how staggering the connections means that none of the conductive areas can touch. The connection on the red wire is a good way away from the connection on the white wire. Now all that's left to do is to connect the copper strands. And that is the stereo to mono cable complete. The next step is to apply electrical tape. This serves a purpose as the new sleeve of this cable so that these exposed connections can't touch and so that they're hidden and protected from touching anything else conductive. I'm going to start by wrapping tape around the copper wire there. And then onto the white slash blue wire. And now it's worth checking that none of the individual strands of the ground wire are able to touch the red wire or the white wire. I'm using the sharp side of the scissors here just to push these strands down and onto that lower copper ground so that none of them are anywhere near the connection on the red. And finally, I'm going to insulate the red wire connection. Finally, all that's left to do is to tightly wrap the sleeve. So starting on the black existing sleeve and just bringing the tape around all of those wires that we connected, pulling it tight. And there we have it, a newly made stereo to dual mono cable.